One of the most frustrating things about a WWE fan is seeing WWE turn a talented performer into a jobber. This happens so many times throughout WWE history and someone who is a solid mid carder or even a potential main eventer is reduced to an enhancement talent meaning they lose all their matches and mainly exist to put over other wrestlers. Join us now as WrestleMania looks at 10 times WWE turned a great talent into a jobber. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out our new channel, WrestleMania Shorts. Number 10. Drew McIntyre and Between 2009 to 2010, it looks set that Drew McIntyre was going to be the next big thing in the company. Vince McMahon had even christened McIntyre as the chosen one, so it seemed like WWE was set on making McIntyre a huge deal. However, McIntyre didn't have what WWE wanted, and although he was insanely talented, WWE slowly but surely turned him into a jobber. They would pair him with Heath Slater and Jinder Mahal in 3MB and he would turn into a comedic jobber. What was insane about this was that during McIntyre's time as a jobber, his in-ring work vastly improved and it was evident that McIntyre had found his fire. But this sadly wasn't enough for WWE as he would remain in the stagnant position. McIntyre would even lose a match to El Torito on Raw before his premature release in 2014. Thankfully, McIntyre was able to return a number of years later and since then, he's firmly been presented as one of the top stars in the company and has even main evented WrestleMania alongside Brock Lesnar. Number 9. Heath Slater Speaking of 3MB, one of the other members of the infamous stable, Heath Slater, was also mistreated in WWE. Slater, following the breakup of the lackluster core stable, emerged as one of the breakout stars. Slater was charismatic and could truly go in the ring. He would spend years in a job role, but that was until 2016 where he was involved in a free agent storyline on SmackDown, which was universally acclaimed. Slater was tremendous in this role and WWE had made a solid mid-carder, but after the storyline was over, Slater moved back down the card to jobber status. He was eventually released in 2020, which shocked fans as well as fellow WWE talent as Slater had a phenomenal reputation and was well liked by everyone backstage. Number 8. Mickey James when Mickey James returned to WWE TV in 2017, fans expected big things. Mickey was a certified legend and could still actively hang with anyone on the women's roster. However, just a few short weeks into her return, it was evident that she was brought back exclusively to put over new female talent. This was disappointing and over time fans simply stopped caring. Why root for a legend if it's already 99% guaranteed that they're going to lose? WWE did a massive disservice with Mickey's return run and hopefully if Mickey ever decides to return again, she's given the treatment she deserves and isn't treated like a complete jobber. Number 7. Zack Ryder Zack Ryder's influence on pro wrestling, particularly in the early 2010s, can never be diminished. Ryder managed to get himself over by creating his own YouTube show and this type of content was extremely rare at the time, meaning that Ryder certainly opened the door for other talent to find fame and fortune in this manner. Whilst Ryder was vastly popular online and this was slowly transitioning to TV, WWE were reluctant to use Ryder in a substantial role. He was a solid hand and had an infectious personality that was badly needed on WWE TV at the time. Ryder had sporadic pushes throughout his tenure including a US title win in 2011 as well as an IC championship win at WrestleMania 32, but these were extremely brief. When these reigns came to a close, Ryder was straight back down the card, ready to put over any talent WWE saw fit. WWE truly failed to understand why Ryder was popular and how they could have made a huge financial gain with a prominent, sustained push for the talented star but their stubbornness simply stopped this from happening. Number 6. Dominic Dajakovic now, Upon its surfacing online that WWE were calling up NXT star Dominic Dajakovic, fans were excited. He was someone, well on paper at least, that Vince McMahon should have loved. He had size, presence and could seriously go when the bell rang. WWE's bizarre idea for the NXT staple was to turn him into a character known as T-Bar and he would be part of the infamous Retribution stable. As part of his new character, he would wear a mask and there would be virtually no mention of his prior NXT persona. His moveset was vastly altered and his match quality suffered as a result. Naturally, this didn't get over well and instead of reverting to the Dajakovic character, WWE decided to punish him and turn him into a jobber. He would lose every single match for what seemed like years on end. This became incredibly frustrating and was such a waste of someone who could have really helped the roster depth on the main roster. 
Eventually, in 2022, they decided to have Dajakovic return to NXT. Why this took so long is anyone's guess. Number 5. Mustafa Ali in 2019, Mustafa Ali found his groove on the main roster. He was inserted into the main event scene on SmackDown, and thanks to Ali's incredible in-ring work, as well as fantastic side characters such as Daniel Bryan and Samoa Joe, Ali became universally loved by the fans. Sadly, an injury halted Ali's push, and at one stage, he was even rumored for a WWE title match with Daniel Bryan at WrestleMania 35, but this injury obviously canceled these plans. When Ali eventually returned from injury, it was clear that WWE still saw bright things in Ali's future, and he was even rumored to win the Money in the Bank ladder match, but WWE eventually decided to go with Brock Lesnar. But it was after this that things began to change, and WWE seemingly overnight decided that Ali was now going to be a jobber moving forward. Ali would lose match after match, and even when he would lead the Retribution stable in 2020 as a heel, he seemed to lose more matches than he won. Ali reportedly requested his release because he had enough of his WWE run, but this was refused. Although Ali had won a few matches on TV in recent months, it's clear that WWE still sees him at a certain level, and that's unlikely to ever change. Number 4. Earthquake Earthquake during the early 90s was a reliable talent that WWE could always count on for a solid match. He was safe, well-liked, and was over with the fan base. When he returned to WWE in 1998, the landscape was vastly different, as WWE were in full swing with the Attitude Era. This meant that WWE would give him a brand new character, and they were clearly mocking the great wrestler with his new persona. Earthquake would become Golga, he would wear a mask, and his entire gimmick was based on the fact that he was a huge fan of South Park's Eric Cartman. He would be a part of the Oddity stable, and it didn't take long for WWE to give up on this stable. All members of the group, including Golga, became jobbers. He would lose endless matches, and it was a massive waste of someone who could have added experience and depth to the Attitude roster. Number 3. Eric Young TNA legend Eric Young signing with WWE was a huge deal, and when Young debuted in NXT, he was presented rather well. Young would create the Sanity stable, and this was very popular with NXT fans, but when the group was called up to the main roster, everything just went wrong. They were barely used as a faction, and eventually Vince McMahon decided to split the stable up. And in the process, Young would turn into WWE's new resident jobber. This was incredibly depressing to watch, as Young had so much to offer. He was very much an all-rounder, but McMahon just couldn't care less. Young was relegated to WWE Main Event, where he would stay for the rest of his WWE tenure. He was eventually released in 2020, making WWE's treatment of Young one of the biggest missed opportunities in recent memory. Number 2. Dolph Ziggler a former world champion Dolph Ziggler has had one of the more unusual career trajectories in WWE. He's been given a number of pushes, but these pushes are never long term. And when these are over, Ziggler falls dramatically down the card and he just seems to lose every single match he's booked in. This is rather unusual as WWE only likes Ziggler to start winning matches when they need him to enter into a prominent feud, and this usually involves Ziggler putting over another talent. This booking pattern has led to fans simply not caring about what Ziggler brings to WWE as he loses too much to be taken seriously, and it could be argued that he's WWE's permanent yet highly decorated jobber. WWE have had so many opportunities to push him to the moon and keep him there, but there's always been something holding him back from fully investing in him. And number 1. Cody Rhodes It's hard to believe that before Cody Rhodes was one of the top babyfaces in WWE, he was a permanent jobber and would mainly feature on WWE's main event. When Rhodes turned into the infamous Stardust character in 2014, everything changed. The character failed to take off and WWE eventually gave up on presenting Rhodes as a major player. He would appear mainly on TV to lose and it was frustrating to watch as a viewer, especially knowing that Rhodes had potential to become a main eventer in WWE. He left in 2016 as he knew his worth and this would be a decision that would change his life. Rhodes would be a pillar of the AEW brand and eventually he would be in a position to return to WWE in 2022. Since then, Rhodes has been presented as an absolute megastar, but it was still a massive shame that WWE turned the elite talent into a jobber during his final months of his initial run in the company. But there you have it folks, 10 times WWE turned great talent into a jobber. Be sure to leave your comments down below and I'll see you next time with some more wrestling content.